Hey, good morning from Pastor Jonathan at Robertsdale UMC. Welcome back to another Lenten devotional video as we read through the Gospel of Mark together. Uh, it is Thursday, March the 4th, and today we're reading uh, Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. And I'm going to read this story. It's a, it's a miraculous feeding story of Jesus, the first one that we have of this kind in Mark. Uh, there will be uh, another. Uh, but in verse 30, it says, The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Right, So he sent them out yesterday. He sent the twelve out two by two, primarily to cast out demons, to preach the good news, to heal the sick. Uh, so they gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them on the other side. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take more than half a year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten was 5,000. So I just want to go through and make some observations about this story and then uh, think about together what it might mean for us today. Uh, first of all, uh, Jesus and his disciples go to the other side of the lake. Uh, they're trying to go and get some rest, but the people are there ahead of them uh, just hungry. But they're not just hungry for food. In fact, they don't get hungry until Jesus has taught them for a long time and it gets late in the day. Um, it's revealed what they're hungry for in verse 34. When Jesus landed and he saw them, he had compassion on them. And I think this is crucially important because this, is, this story is not just a display of God's power through Jesus, but it shows us that God's power is always uh, intricately linked to his love and his compassion. In the kingdom of God, uh, the power is always attached to God's love and God's compassion, which is now being revealed through Jesus. So this isn't just a demonstration of God's power in the kingdom. It's also a demonstration that compassion and love uh, are what happens in the kingdom, and that sometimes even leads to miraculous change. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And that language all throughout the Old Testament is used repeatedly to talk about Israel in a time that they did not have a king or at least a good king, a good leader. Um, and that's interesting because we just came from a story yesterday of Herod, didn't we? Herod, who was sitting on the throne as a uh, supposed king of the Jews uh, in a way. He was a tetrarch, um, one of the sons of Herod. And we see what he's up to. Uh, we see his partying. Uh, we see that he's, he's, he's busy beheading prophets and uh, winking at pretty girls, as N.T. Wright says. And so Jesus looks at these people as, as leaderless and kingless, and he has compassion on them for that. So he begins to teach them. And this story is supposed to call to mind as we read these things, could this be the king in waiting? Remember how Mark's whole gospel starts, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. And that's kingship language, uh, both in the word Messiah or Christ and in the phrase Son of God. So we're, we're seeing this king in waiting kind of rise up and continue uh, to roll out the kingdom of God, uh, even as the kingdoms of the world are going about their business. This new thing is happening. So he asks his disciples quizzically, um, or the disciples say, send these people away so they can get something to eat. And then Jesus says, you give them something to eat. And I don't know if you hear that. But I hear that as an invitation to all who would follow Jesus. We would come to Jesus and say, uh, these people need you to do something. And, and then he looks at us and says, you give them something to eat. 
and practically speaking, they say, we simply can't. We don't have enough. Uh, then Jesus invites them to go and see what they do have. He miraculously multiplies it. And uh, before then, he directs them to sit down in groups. And it says that they sit in groups on the green grass. And that might sound like a subtle detail. But actually, when I was doing some homework on this passage, I learned that that is significant because this is a region where the spring grass would have sprouted up very quickly, very vibrantly, very green. But as soon as the rains of the month of May uh, would end, the grass would begin to be scorched by the sun and would be green no longer. So there was a very specific window during the year of springtime when the grass would have been green, and that's the season of Passover. And so just by saying they sat down on the green grass, the writer, Mark, is letting us know that this is Passover time. And remember that this gospel would have been written about Jesus after the resurrection, after it's truly revealed who he is, after all this has happened, including the crucifixion and the resurrection. And the, the, the church, the early church, the disciples of Jesus are already meeting together and sharing together the Lord's Supper. Jesus has already redefined the Passover, saying, this is my body, this is my blood. And so that language, when Jesus took the five loaves, looked up to heaven, gave thanks, broke, and gave, all of that language is communion language, and it's redefining the Passover. All of that is called to mind in this story. He's giving them a foretaste of the meal to come. They ate and were satisfied, and then they had 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish, 12 being the number of the tribes of Israel, 12 also in the New Testament coming to mean the number of the church, uh, who is the fulfilled Israel, the bride of Christ, uh, awaiting the groom to return. So all of this story, uh, the, all of this imagery is just packed with meaning. And it's clear that Jesus does something in this story that he's not done yet in the gospel, and that is he creates out of nothing. Uh, we've seen Jesus raise the dead. We've seen Jesus heal the sick. We've seen Jesus have authority over impure spirits and cast them out. And all of this is amazing. And that word uh, comes up all the time. The people are amazed at Jesus. But never yet has Jesus demonstrated creation power. And one thing that tells us, one thing that we're meant to see in this story is just another layer of who this man is and what the kingdom of God looks like when it comes. It has the power of new creation new creation has come. We're going to read about that uh, in the days of the early church when Paul writes to the Corinthians, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. And so one of the things that this challenges me on is that it would be easy to read this as Jesus' disciples and, and uh, to use N.T. Wright's language to say maybe we should just strive harder and work harder for famine relief. Uh, and certainly we should, but even over and above that, uh, the kingdom of God has the power to recreate the systems of the world for new creation to actually come in. Not just work harder to provide more food for the hungry, uh, but to actually recreate, restore, uh, fix broken systems so that true and lasting relief can come to people, so that salvation can be expressed even through the work that God is doing in the broken places of the world. So I, I wonder what this uh, stirs up in you, how it inspires you, how it challenges you, uh, how it impacts you as you hear just uh, more about the story of Jesus as we journey with him together and learn more about who he is and the life that he calls us to and the kingdom that he's bringing to bear in the world. Uh, I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow and Saturday morning and then uh, Sunday morning at 10 for Worship Live. Even if you're at home or uh, worshiping from wherever you are, uh, we would love for you to be with us at 10 a.m. as we gather together to worship our Lord Jesus. I pray that today and each of these days you just feel drawn a little closer to him, that you have a little more uh, of a vision of who he is and what that means for us today for him to be our Lord and Savior. God bless you. Grace and peace.